So I don't know if you guys saw, but we have had a just a rush of information coming out about Zaluzhny, uh, which is the chief of the Ukrainian armed forces. He's he's the head general number uno and Zelensky. So there have been rumors for for months and months and months and months about these two shooting. Some of it comes from the Economist article, uh, the Economist interview that he uh, was a part of, and the article he read wrote with it, which called the war stalemate, which we know that Zelensky didn't like, and then resulted in him trying to stop Zeluzhny from making any more press statements that he thinks could undermine um, uh, his image for the war, how he thinks the war should be portrayed when trying to present to the world from a diplomatic perspective. Uh, there is seems to be some uh, belief that he could maybe Zeluzhny could be. Uh, in a way, I don't know how to better put it, scapegoated for the uh, lackluster result, to say the least, of the counteroffensive, even though putting it at his feet, of course, I'm not in the room. I don't know how much of that from what we have publicly available, we can really lay at his feet. But there, for, for a whole host of reasons, and this is not uncommon, by the way, I think some people are trying to treat this as, as it's a lot more uncommon than it was. This is not uncommon at nations at war, especially democracies at war. Uh, in democracies at war, the civ civilian elected leaders will always take priority over the military leaders because the civilians are the ones who have the actual legislative, uh, you know, real power. They're the ones that change the laws, etc. Whereas while the military has a direct physical force, at the end of the day, it is the president and the elected leaders who choose who serve in these positions and choose the nation's strategy moving forward. Not like the specific, like, this is the battle plan here and here, but the general strategy. And so if it's a showdown between a, a civilian official, and military official, as long as the civilian official has enough political capital to do so, the civilian capital, the civilian official wins in a democracy. And in nation states at war, these types of cabinet shuffling, the idea of uh, shuffling the top of, of the command or lower parts of the command, it's not that uncommon. And so while it did make me widen my eyes a bit, hearing that Zelensky is going to fire Zeluzhny. Didn't surprise me a ton, but it did surprise me at least a little. Uh, and it surprised me at least a little because I know from the Kiev Institute of Sociology that Zelensky has a 62% uh, trust rating, which is pretty high. Pretty high, I think, as an American, I could say, if we had a president like that, that would be bad. That person win win an election. Um, so, sorry, I just got a message. Yeah, so Zelensky has 62%, and that's fantastic. Delusiony had 88. So I didn't think he was going to do it for, for that reason, that reason alone. That's not the only reason. I mean, I, I hear good things about, about Zelensky's ability to command. He's well-respected amongst the troops, but I didn't think they were going to do it, but they pulled the trigger according to The Economist and a bunch of other Western journalists. And if you go through here, you can see now the BBC and a bunch of others, the Financial Times, et cetera, all these different journalists. I think it was Oliver, yeah, Oliver Carroll was I think the first journalist, uh, a correspondent for The Economist to break the story. And everybody was like, oh snap, they're gonna, they're going to fire Zeluzhny, but he's so popular. And I heard he's good. I hope they don't replace him with Sierski. Oh, meat, it better not be meat assault Sierski. Oh, that'd be terrible. Oh, my goodness. Why Why are they firing him? Oh, is this civilian policy? And everybody was theorizing, theorizing, theorizing. And then 30 minutes into the theorizing, as I was theorizing, just like everybody else, we get a statement from the Ukrainian defense ministry saying that this is hogwash, saying that they had not fired Zeluzhny and that the story is being reported by reporters is false. Now, I have seen a lot of people treat Oliver Carroll and other journalists who broke the story very poorly in response to this, because the conclusion that everybody jumped to was, oh, well, if the if Ukrainian Ministry of Defense said it didn't happen, then it didn't happen. Now, as, as much as I you know, I would say that I want the Ukrainians to win and liberate their country. I am not a stooge, and I will not be a stooge for the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense either. Just because, and I can't believe I have to say this, just because the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense said so does not necessarily make it true. 
It could be. There's a few, there's a bunch of ways you can analyze the story. It could be that, for example, they were gonna go through with it, and then once the story leaked, they saw some of the public reactions. Some people going like, "Oh me, oh my, I like Zeluzhny," and they decided to reverse course. It could be that Zelensky is still informing his allies and still getting ready, still preparing the narratives, still trying to inform not only his political allies but his foreign allies, and so they're waiting back to announce his removal. And whoever the press secretary is for the Ministry of Defense wouldn't necessarily have that information. I mean, there's a bunch of stories that could, a bunch of scenarios that could lead to Oliver Carroll getting the four, and yes, four sources, anonymous sources, but in a story like this, the, sto uh, the people being anonymous isn't that crazy. And it's not just him. It's other outlets as well, like the BBC, saying that they were going to, that Zelensky had already written up the documents to remove him and that they had asked for him to step down, but then he refused. They offered him an advisory position and then he refused. So it could be that they offered the position, uh, Zeluzhny refused, and now they're at an impasse and now Zelensky's getting ready to remove him some other way. There's a bunch of ways that this story could be Zeluzhny's still gonna get removed or that Zelensky was gonna remove him, but then saw some of the backlash and then did a, a U-turn. All I'm going to say about this is when it comes to the reporting angle before we get into the specifics of Zeluzhny, just wait. It's not hard to wait. Just wait until the information comes out and then comment. And when I say, you know, wait till the information comes out, that doesn't mean you can't like be like, wow, well, what's this story? I got to wait. You can still vaguely talk about it, but don't come out confidently going after Carol and his friends trying to get them fired. I saw people trying to get these guys fired. And some of these tweets had like hundreds of hundreds of hundreds of likes. Thankfully, in hundreds, I, didn't see, I didn't see any in the thousands, thank goodness. Calling him for him to be fired because possibly he just did his job well and you just don't know it because you're believing the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense at face value. It's silly, silly. Now, that doesn't mean that the Ministry of Defense couldn't be telling the truth and that, for example, we're going to find out that Oliver Cromwell actually had a bunch of bad sources or otherwise. It could be the case that that's, you know, that's the situation, but we don't have evidence of that. So just wait. Don't jump to conclusions. Your job is not to suck the hairs off the cock of the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense. Your job is to, is to monitor the war, or if you're a viewer of the war and you're trying to understand it, and take all the information available gather it, and see what situation has the most evidence for it, and acknowledge the facts. But you don't have all the facts yet, so completely disregarding the story is nonsensical. It could be, there could be situations where the Ukrainian government does things that are against the interests of the Ukrainian people. And in those instances, I don't want people to just say, oh, well, the Ukrainian government said this, so. Look, it's, it's mostly, uh, uh, like, Foreigners that I've seen that have been most angry about it, people who don't even live in Ukraine. But there have been some Ukrainians that are angry about it, but most of them are of the style of just wait and see. My point is generally, though, we don't know who these sources Oliver had was. Trying to get him fired. If anybody is trying to do that, you're disgusting and fuck you. I don't want you in my community. And, and lastly, just wait. Just wait, just wait, just wait. It could be that Zeluzhny doesn't get fired because Zelensky backtracked. It could be that Zeluzhny does get fired. It could be that all of this was a big nothing burger and maybe Oliver really was taken for a ride, but I find that unlikely given all the other sources that are talking about it. There is also a history of coverage of their, the possible conflict between Zeluzhny and Zelensky. Point is, just leave Oliver alone. Moving on to the idea of Zeluzhny actually being removed. What would that mean? Well, first off, I think the first thing that popped into my mind was that he helped organize the defense of the country. He was appointed to position in 2021 in order to prepare the country for a potential Russian invasion. He did a pretty decent job, defended Kiev, organized the Kharkiv counteroffensive and the Kherson counteroffensive, helped to organize those, carried it out successfully. So he seems to be a competent commander. And from everything I hear, he does have a general care for the troops. But that doesn't mean he, that he might not be the wrong person for the job. There could be a job that's necessary that needs to be done that he might not be the right person for. Again, this, a lot of this is private. But 
not having him in that position is certainly something that's number one concerning to a lot of Ukrainians because they're worried about the idea of him getting replaced by somebody who's less qualified, like or or possibly just not as good of a commander. The person I hear about people being worried about the most is the head of the Ukrainian ground forces, Sirsky. So that's a possible impact. Whoever gets replaced with, there's gonna possibly, depending on who he's replaced with, be a drop in the quality of the commander. Might be the other way around, but I don't know who they would replace that would get, give them a more quality commander than Zaluzhny. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Uh, second effect, uh, morale. The morale on the Ukrainian soldiers on the front will probably be affected. They'll either think, okay, this guy that we liked and we thought that liked us because he has an 88% trust rating is gone. They're replacing him, and it'll be worse depending on who they replace him with. Um, they're replacing him. We don't like that. We trusted this guy. We, you're going to have to build up the trust in the new person. So that's going to take an impact. And that's only not an impact on morale when it comes to the armed forces. That's also an impact when it comes to general society. Because again, 88% of Ukrainians, not of those in the armed forces. So there's a problem with morale. There's also a problem about the message that this sends. We know what the Russians are trying to do right now. They're trying to paint the war as unwinnable. They're trying to paint the Ukrainians as people fighting for a lost cause. And they're doing everything they can to increase divisions and tensions within European and North American societies in order to divert aid and bring the attention internally. If there was to be a shuffle of who the Supreme Commander is, considering the amount of positive coverage around Zaluzhny, the Iron General, yeah, that could, uh, I, I, I don't think that would uh, be received well. I don't think it would be received well. I don't think it would be received well, not only by the Ukrainian public, but I, I think there's a possibility it might not be received well by the foreign public, and the Russians will use it to capitalize on it, spread Russian propaganda and say, oh, they fired him because no one, even with him being so competent, could save this mess of a war. And so there's a foreign policy angle to it, which is why I think part of the thing might be that Zelensky's talking to allies, and the last thing he wants to do is send a signal to a divided Congress right now on Ukraine that says, oh, this is a lost cause. You don't need to send us support. When, due to the Republican uh, hostage taking over Ukraine aid for the border and then that falling apart is already up in the air. So there's also uh, some, some equation when it comes to foreign aid and how our allies review this. That's not to even mention the fact that our allies also have, you know, talked to Z Zaluzhny, met Zaluzhny, met people in his staff. And that's another thing, the reshuffling. When you take Zaluzhny out, it's not just Zaluzhny is going to go. It's going to be Zaluzhny, and it's going to be a bunch of people under Zaluzhny. And so those people are going to be fired because as it happens, when somebody comes into this position, they bring a bunch of people with them and remove a bunch of people. Hell, a bunch of people won't need to be removed. A lot of people might resign with Zaluzhny because they don't want to serve under somebody else, or they might not be happy with the situation. And that change in command, that change in the officers, that change down the structure, now that's not going to lead to catastrophic confusion. But it's going to take a moment or two to get reorganized and to get situated and to learn certain things that Zaluzhny already has like two years of experience in. And so that's also going to have an impact. So we don't know for sure if Zaluzhny is going to be fired, right? Now, it could be that they were going to fire him and now they've changed course. It could be that they're going to fire him and now they're trying to inform other allies and all the other people and get ready for it. It could be they're gonna fire him, but it's just gonna be the next day, the next day, the next day. And today they wanted to just offer him first before they fired him, like an opportunity to resign. It could be all just nonsense. And maybe all these outlets are, are using the same terrible anonymous sources because there is such a thing as a bad anonymous source. But considering that Oliver had four anonymous sources and now we're talking about the BBC as well. I mean, I. <sighs> You know, it makes you think. It makes you think. It makes you think. Point is, though, if this is a change in command, hopefully it's not Sierski. God, please, it's not Sierski. Maybe it would be Budinov. Who knows? Budinov is the person, if someone put a gun to my head and said it, they were going to replace him with anybody, I'd probably lean towards him since he is a Zelensky ally. And he's not Sierski, who has a terrible relationship or let me be rephrase that, a, a bad reputation, a reputation amongst Ukrainian ground soldiers. And if Zaluzhny's already creating a morale deficit 
by removing him. The last thing you want to do is remove him with, uh, you know, general, I don't want to call him general meat assault, but he, uh, he, he does not have the best reputation. Anyway, Delusion might get canned, but we don't know for sure. Either way, uh, the story's creating waves. It'll only create more waves. Turns out to be true.